we've got positive drive in both directions and it has fixed that transmission fault. A big hello to you, I hope I find you well. I'm Jenny Kirk, welcome you up here to Weir Yard. Now, today this video is for you. If you've got a Daypole class 122 or 121 rail car in double O and you found it's a little bit sluggish and on closer inspection, you find that the drive just doesn't seem to be working properly to one of the bogies. This appears to be a uh, fairly common problem, especially if the model has been in storage for a while. But don't despair. In today's video, I'm going to be delving into my own models and showing you just how to easily fix this problem so it never comes back. So come with me in association with Trainomatic makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. But this is an easy fix and I'm going to talk you through every stage of the process. So stick with me and let's get your models fixed. <laughs> I did a review of the Daypole class 122 and 121 models on this channel quite some time ago now and I was very impressed with them and I still am but there's a problem that has crept in and that is that the transmission is slipping going to one of the bogey towers and this seems to have afflicted both of my models and indeed the model of a friend of mine as well. When I looked online, this seems to be a common issue. So in this video, I'm going to be looking at an easy way to show you how to fix this and get your Daypole rail car up and running perfectly once again. As you can see from this Silverlink example, when I give it some power, it's very sluggish and I can hear that the motor is really, really running hard, but it's just not working properly. It's skidding on one of the bogies and it just really doesn't work as well as it did when it was new. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dismantle this and I'm going to get to the root of what the problem is and show you how you can fix it on your model. I've got together the tools that we're going to need for this. You're going to need some super glue. Be really careful with this, obviously. You don't want to get it all over the model. You'll need a tissue as well. And then I've got a solvent, and this is for cleaning the oil that's contaminated some of the push fit components. And what I'm using here is just some simple, cheap white spirit. And I've decanted a small amount into a plastic cup just for ease of use. I've also got a cotton Q-tip, and I'm going to be using this for trying to clean inside some of the components using the white spirit as the solvent. And then I've got a crosshead screwdriver, small type, and a flathead screwdriver, which I'm going to be using to manipulate some parts, along with some tweezers as well. Now to get inside the model, this is just simply a case of there's no screws holding it in. Just get your nails underneath the bottom of the body on both sides. If you don't have long nails, then you can also use something like a uh, business card, uh, something like that, just to get in and pull these away from the chassis. Don't do this up above a hard floor, just do it over something like a table. Pull them apart and just a couple of knocks of your knuckles on the table and the body will come off. This reveals the inside of the model. I'm going to remove this DCC cover and that's where the decoder is sat. And then I'm going to get to work just removing the seating area. Now there's four screws on this. Just make sure you don't lose these. And they just use the small crosshead. Let's get that out and away to one side. You don't have to take the decoder out if you've got it DCC fitted. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to turn this and you can see there that this worm gear is not turning whereas that worm gear is and for some reason it always seems to afflict this end of the transmission in the model now i don't know why but it is a fairly simple fix so what i'm going to do now is we're going to have to undo the circuit board and just lift it 
out of the way. We don't remove it completely from the model because it will still be attached by wires and we don't want to mess about with having to solder anything. So there's a screw in this corner. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this over. And this is a handy thing just to put the screws into so that we don't end up losing these to the carpet gods. We've got another screw over here and a little bit later on we're going to need access here so I'm going to take off this one screw and that's just for ease of use and then I'm going to put these screws out of the way safely so we don't knock and lose them. Using the large flathead jeweler's screwdriver we're just going to get in underneath very very carefully and also pull out the lighting boards from each end and just going to move this to one side as you can see it's attached by wires so we don't want to overstress them and then what we've got here is the top of the transmission tower just getting in underneath use the flathead screwdriver we're just trying to unclip that from the chassis. This is a plastic cover that the worm gear is contained within. There we go, got one side and then very very carefully get in. Don't leave her against the uh, cosmetic bogey sides. We're just trying to get in underneath and flick off the cover that's over the worm gear. This you might find quite saturated in oil, so I'm just gonna pop it into the white spirit and that should clean things off. The worm then, we can lever up and let the bogey drop down. Remember it is still attached by wires and then that allows this end to pop clear. and then very gently pull that out. And that's the root of the cause. We're getting a little bit of lubricant just onto the end of this. And sometimes you also find that these just split and you can see that spins quite freely. So I'm just gonna take that off. I'm gonna dump that into the solvent as well. Dump that in as well. I can feel a little bit of lubricant on my fingers. Now that that's out, I'm just going to just try and take the collar out, slide it off with the screwdriver. Once I take it out, I'll show you what this is, just so you can understand what we've got. Right, the worm has come off. When you take it out, there are two brass collars with some kind of neoprene washers in between and I just carefully dump that down into the solvent as well. You need to make sure that whatever you're using is safe to use on plastic and won't actually soften or damage and cheap white spirit is um, in my experience pretty good for doing that job. Now somewhere in here we should have that uh, connector and you can see it here and one end that end is where the worm gear fits into it and at the other end you'll see a little attachment the same as what we pulled off the other end and it's covered in this white grease which is part of the problem for now I'm just going to dunk the entire thing into that white spirit and just give that a swoosh around and this rod as well I'm going to just clean up that end and let's just get the other end and just clean that off the next step I'm going to get a q-tip put that in a little bit of the white spirit and what I want to do is just clean out inside the end of where the rod goes into the uh, flywheel. Just make sure 
get any grease out from in there. If you need to just dab that off with the tissue. And then what I need to do now, I'm gonna go fishing in here. It's a little bit cloudy. You can see the oil that's come off things. And uh, let's take out the top of the worm gear cover and just wipe that down. Put this to one side. You can see all that white grease and any oil that's got in there is gone. And just going to try and get out this fitting that goes at the flywheel end. Very carefully put that into the cloth. We're just going to dry that out and this should now be clear of any grease oil contaminants. Be very careful with this. Seems very, very keen to fly off into the carpet. Just going to put that there and get back the uh, drive shaft. And this end with the cutout is the end that we want this to go on to. Now it's time for the super glue. Very carefully open this up. And what I'm going to do is put a small amount just around the end. So make sure you don't stick your fingers to this. So we're going to push that down and on. Just make sure we've got a good bond on that and give that a chance to set. If there's slightly too much on, very, very carefully we can wick that off. I'm just going to leave that to one side just to make sure that that sets. The next thing up, the collar. It's had a good soak in the white spirit into the tissue. And dab that off. I'm going to make use of the Q-tip again. A little dab in the solvent and just clean out in the other end where the worm gear goes. Clean out. Again, dab it dry. Then we need to try and get that other piece out from here. It is a push fit, but it is quite tight. Make sure you don't risk either breaking it or firing it across the room. It's where the tweezers are really, really useful. Right, we've got that out. That down there. Quick visual inspection. That looks okay. I'm just going to make sure that that is absolutely clear of solvent. And then we're going to want this on the other end of this uh, rod. So again, we're going to put some super glue around our cleaned rod. Very, very carefully line up and you have just a moment to push this on. There we go. And just make sure that the end is fine. And we're going to set that aside again, let that set. Whilst that's going on, we can clean any excessive grease and oil from the top of the gear tower. You don't want any big crusty deposits. Just get that all out. I'm going to just wipe that down, get any residue out. And then we can go in and get our worm gear assembly back out again. You need to make sure you've got both of those brass collars and the neoprene washers in between. Dry that off. And you can see from all of this how mucky that has become. I mean, I know the bottom of this is um, a little bit grubby anyway because I've used it before for other jobs. But I can see that the white spirit has gone slightly cloudy and it's a white cloudiness from that white grease. So we're just going to make sure that we've got the uh, brass collars on, everything's clean and clear. And then I'm going to place this back into the top of the gear tower. Just make sure that all is well. And that's down in place. 
I can see there's a little bit of white left inside there. I'm just going to give that a good clean. Just dab it dry. Right, the next thing now, we've got a um, good solid bond on the end of these. None of the super glue is wet. So we're going to push fit this back in here. Now, just to make sure you don't break the super glue bond, what I suggest is place that flat down on your cutting mat, place that into the groove, and then with a pair of tweezers, push down on the fitting rather than the rod. And that has now gone into place, and I can feel there's no slippage on that. Next part of this assembly is probably the most tricky. We're going to take this and we're going to feed it down. And there are two wires underneath. We're going to feed it between those two wires and into the gap. And just work it down. And then just let that drop into that groove. You can then just manipulate this carefully back. Try and line that up. And we want to go that, that to go into the slot in the flywheel. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Carefully manipulate it back. And there we go. So that's now in place in the flywheel. Make sure that these two wires, and I'm going to try and lift this up and show you. There's two wires underneath. Make sure that they straddle now either side of that transmission. And then we're going to carefully move this to one side. And this is going to be quite tricky. Difficult to see, but we're going to now angle the bogey up and slide that collar back onto the end of the shaft We've got the worm gear on. And then with the flathead screwdriver, I'm just going to get that in place. Flathead screwdriver and the tweezers. I'm going to use the tweezers to carefully push against that plastic collar, the screwdriver against the end of the metal shaft. And what we're trying to do here is to get the metal shaft that the worm gears on to slide into the collar. This doesn't need super glue. It is a tight fit. Check there. That is going in. Need to make sure that that is nicely in place. I can feel it sliding and you'll see it just there come into view. Once you're happy, check the drive. Make sure that that's working and I can feel that that's nice and tight. So we've now got positive drive to both bogies. I'm going to start to reassemble. So circuit board back into place. Make sure that the end lighting boards just fit into their grooves. And we're going to get our little box of screws first up. Let's make sure that our bogey stays in place. The big wide screw just goes into the top there. Next, these two screws for the circuit board. And you'll be able to tell them apart. There's four wide, flat, short screws, and therefore the uh, seating. Two screws that are identical. These do the circuit board. Just make sure all is well. Once we're happy with that, we're going to get the top that clips on over the worm gear. Slide that down over the worm gear and then push until you hear the click. Just check everything rotates freely. You can see that worm doing its thing. That's exactly what we want. At this point, what is best to do is take this to the track and just test it and see how we get on. So with the chassis on the track, I'm going to give that some power and instantly you can see that it's just smoother, more responsive. If I try and push it, 
I can feel that both ends of that transmission are engaged and working and that is exactly what we want. Again, we can get a nice turn of speed. So I'm happy with that. And let's continue putting it back together. So next step, let's get that seating back into place. Line it up with the holes. We've got our screws here, really, really easy. And final screw. Then we get the DCC cover just over the decoder. That clips into place. Make sure that the lighting boards at the end are down. And then the body, we make sure that the guards compartment is over where the DCC decoder sits. And let's just make sure we can slide this down get each end of the chassis lined up and it's just simply a case of push fit here it click into place and then once we're happy with that that is everything done and dusted and we can just double check that on the track quick double check and we've got positive drive in both directions and it has fixed that transmission fault let's just double check on the lights so we've got red tail lights coming on, cab light, other cab light, compartment light, everything is working as expected. Well, I hope you found this video informative and don't forget if you know somebody else who's having a few problems with the Daypole class 122 and 121 rail cars, then share this video with them and hopefully we can get their models sorted. And I'd love to hear from you in the comment section down below whether this is uh, a little fix that maybe you've used yourself or maybe you've come up with another solution to this problem. Do leave a comment down below and it's a great way of passing on information to your fellow modelers. And don't forget that we've got our merch store down below as well and you can check out our full range of t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, stickers and so much more. But until next time, this is me Jenny Kirk saying you take great care of yourself. Happy modeling, bye for now. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon, and an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis. David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYM Arish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 Class, Ian Coulson, Alan Dickerson, Eddie Papert, Karen Nicholl, Medwin Williams, Crossways Point Junction, 3B Rail, Jennifer Horton, Trains with Nick, and Simon Snow. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.